Hello, this is a little bit of a quick disclaimer. It's just to say that the comment section will be blocked for this one. Considering this is a movie about Trump and what you say, Trump has some less than favorable things to say about this movie. And considering uh, there's a presidential election coming up in less than two weeks away, so chances are I don't have a, a de don't to deal with a dogfight on my comment section. So to anyone that supports Trump or anyone involved in the Apprentice movie, you kind of did this to yourself. So if you're really that desperate to comment on this video, just comment on my other videos, please, and I'll put two and two together. Hello, my name is Elijah Wells, and today's review is Abby Abshi's, uh new movie, The Apprentice. Taking place throughout the 70s and the 80s, it, it follows Donald Trump, who's uh, portrayed in this movie by Sebastian Stan, as he grows his uh, real estate empire and uh, grows it and grows it. Uh, Two point involves uh, his hotel and, of course, involves a casino, several casinos in Atlanta City, with the help with the help of the really cold and pretty unlikable uh, lawyer, being uh, Roy Cohen, played by Jamie Strong, as well as. Uh, dealing with his really turbulent marriage with Ivana Trump, played by Maria Bakalava. Even though the idea of a movie about Trump is going to bound to raise a few eyebrows, even though I think a normal thing when you want to make a movie about a president, as in leave it uh, for a couple of years and see how the peop how people moved on, and even his supporters may have moved on and all that. But in this case, knowing that Trump is of course running for the election uh, uh, right now as we speak. Uh, it, it, we'll just say the controversy around this movie has hit boiling point at this point. So much so that Trump has, sent, uh, has threatened legal action onto this movie. After one of the producers or the investors in this movie were led to under the impression that this movie was going to depict Trump in a more of a very flattering light. But of course, uh, the, the said ambassador, who I'm keeping anonymous in this uh, review, uh, of course took offense of it and threatened legal action with Trump's involvement, of course. And then there's the even bigger issue, despite premiering at the Cannes Film Festival with, I imagine, some rave reviews, the movie uh, had massive difficulties getting a, produce, getting a distributor into North America. So, uh, because, let's face it, I don't think like studios like Disney, who had a massive run-in with, with Ron DeSantis over some uh, really silly laws about gay rights, or uh, Warner Brothers or Paramount, who are just a, maybe a little bit too uh, put off by the politics of the movie and politics in itself. But luckily, The Apprentice has found uh, its uh, a proje, in a sense, or its distributor, in the form of Barrowcliff Entertainment. Like, okay, a bit of a niche uh, distribution uh, place. It's not like A24 or Neon or something. As in, they did do Fahrenheit 11.9, the Michael Moore's unofficial documentary to Fahrenheit 9.11, which is about the 2018 midterms and the first couple of years of Trump presidency, which was only there because uh, the company that's going to do it uh, folded, being the Weinstein company, because of you know what. And also, it did get some attraction for doing the documentary The Dissident, which is about the assassination of Jamal Khashoggi uh, by Saudi Arabia. Again, this was going to be an interesting enough uh, of a massive undertaking of a movie. So much so, there was even a crowdfunding raise to essentially give it a proper US and Canada release. Even though the film, against a very modest 12 to 16 million dollar budget, uh, so far as of recording, it's uh, not even made 5 million dollars. But regardless how the really intricate uh, backstory uh, about this movie has gone and how uh, it was uh, it was difficult for the producers to uh, back anyone from Hollywood into this movie so here are my views for the apprentice the film itself is pretty interesting in, in my opinion the apprentice regardless what your politics are at uh, this is a pretty interesting movie but is it too soon uh, more specifically we have or America has an upcoming presidential election and there is a fighting chance that he could win? Uh, maybe? Yeah, I am I could imagine like in a more of an, alter uh, an alternative world where this came out after the election, uh, whether he wins or not. Uh, this is going to be more of a, uh, how, do, how do we look at it? Like, what could have happened or uh, this is what we've enabled, or this is uh, there's so much a lot of uh, uh, ins and outs of this thing, and a lot of uh, various factors to play into this uh, movie, in my opinion. But 
Uh, for all it's worth, I believe uh, the movie is boasted by a really interesting uh, aesthetic and a really interesting palette of colours and colour grading as well, to a point. There's a lot of instances that I legit thought this movie came out in the 1980s because it used a lot of like uh, colour grading that looks very reminiscent to like an old timey VCR or VHS uh, recording of a movie. Considering some of the things uh, look a tad grainy in some instances, but in a good way to really show into the, go into that uh, aesthetic, uh, in my opinion. For all of its worth, the performances of Sebastian Stan and Jamie Strong and Maria Baclava do give out some really good performances uh, throughout the entirety of this movie as well. Particularly as uh, Don, as Sebastian Stan, as Donald Trump, as he basically uh, starts off as this uh, very sleazy looking landlord who's very interested in like real estate and also uh, knows the ins and outs of the uh, laws and uh, the rule of America and all that. To a point he basically almost morphs into a bigger, bigger monster that he doesn't care if he controls it or not at this point. Like he enabled himself in a sense of a word, but he's pretty proud of his growth and he uh, just wants to keep going up and up and up essentially. Essentially, uh, yeah, uh, the surprising thing that he surprisingly knows what he's doing in this version, like he isn't uh, being, uh, no one wants to write Donald Trump as being the stupid person who just gets away from being a president, like the, the things he uh, kind of gets away with in this movie and how he knew about the uh, loopholes and uh, the injustices within the law system is also pretty cunning in my opinion. And yes, of course, Trump is a massive uh, uh, empire person essentially of the mogul business of the real estate, but of course he is known for not just being the 45th president and maybe 47th, but I have no idea. But again, also that he's a massive uh, figure in the American pop culture scene, particularly with The Apprentice Show, where again he uh, picks some people and does some investment stuff and tries to open uh, their businesses and of course says, you're fired to the loser at the end of it. Of course, he's made a very successful book out of it called Art of a Deal, which again at the end of the film he uh, pretty much... Uh, Miranda was around uh, with Tony Schultz and discussing uh, what he wants to write about this book. I haven't given the book a full read uh, as of now, but uh, I've got to the picture section and it's a little bit more interesting. Like, it does talk about Ivana Trump and uh, the honeymoon. Uh, and of course, what I found a little bit more interesting is that it has Herschel Walker. If you don't know, he was the sent the Senate campaign uh, or senator for uh, Georgia or uh, was a nominee for the Republican Party for Georgia at Senate but of course there's uh, he's been hit with a lot of scandals and that's of course uh, him and Herschel Walker go back a long time as in the early 80s of course there's the dinner parties there was his empires of like buildings his collection of buildings and of course uh, his stuff in the Margaret, uh, Margaret Margo Logo and uh, Atlanta City, which is also really big. And of course, it does talk about his uh, upbringing a little bit, uh, particularly with Fred Trump and and all that. Of course, and of course, uh, not just Ivana, but his college years and even leading a parade. Of course, which is of course I haven't given it a full read, but I might give it a go, uh, probably before or after the election kicks off. The movie, of course, attracted a lot of controversies, not just being about uh, one of the biggest figureheads in America at this point, but also uh, for essentially depicting Donald Trump as a someone who backstabs his uh, close major fears after he got diagnosed with AIDS and is a pill-popping rapist. So, this movie is t that type of movie that's going to really, really anger the MAGA movement, uh, no matter what. like. Even though uh, I did check a video from WatchMojo of the top things that got right and wrong about the movie, like, yes, it got right that uh, 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 Roy Cohen uh, was a closet gay person who unfortunately passed away in the mid-80s from AIDS. But, and also, it is also ri uh, right that his brother, uh, Fred Trump, who uh, unfortunately was b uh, belittled and mocked and bullied by his father, to the point he basically became a hardened alcoholic and died from it in the early 80s. Uh, and also the movie did 
uh, cult, uh, culture to some even, even more controversies, even though he, he uh, Trump has reinstated that he doesn't drink or take drugs. In this movie, he just takes diet pills like they're candy and also sexually assaults Ivana Trump after a very violent argument. Uh, like, even though uh, I don't want to go into this territory of Trump being like a, a, a fun little doofus who does this dance on, on a campaign stage and almost got his ear shot off in one of them, but in this movie he is pretty serious and pretty sinister uh, as well behind the scenes. Even though the director, Abi uh, Ali Abshi, uh, has defended the movie in a sense, as a, he did say in an interview that it's a movie about a human being and it's more of an investigation and an intrusion about those people, not a farce or comedy, but essentially it holds a mirror into him and in a way you, you want to understand him and to try and get his logic as well. Even though uh, he isn't trying to say he's trying to make the great detector by Charlie Chaplin, but Donald Sh uh, Trump said that it's pretty much uh, done at this point. Like uh, he did say, I'm not sure if it's in the, from a rally or from a a, trip so a true social speech. He did uh, describe the movie as a a cheap, defamatory, a politically disgusting hat job, hatchet job, and described the people as human scum. The people who are involved in this movie, of course. Of course, even though I'm not sure if that's in real life, because I, I did notice about the dialogue uh, in this movie, it did sound uh, very eerily canny to a lot of his campaigns and a lot of his tweets and a lot of his posts on Truth Social. Like it does, uh, folk, uh, does go a lot about his vocabulary and how he essentially structures his own uh, sentence. Like, like it's very big, very big, and. Yeah, I feel like every time I hear like Donald Trump in this movie talk, I just feel like I constantly remind myself like uh, all the tweets he said or all the things he said in campaigns and all the things he said in office. Like, like they clearly did a lot of their research in this movie. Like, even though say what you will about this movie already, but I feel like they uh, like given an applause for uh, how they pretty much uh, go into the dialogue of the movie, like how they written this movie, and even though I feel like some instances it does feel like uh, something that Donald Trump could tweet, like a dialogue from this movie. I think in the case the more you think about it, uh, I think uh, it's uh, more likely than ever that a lot of presidential movies, uh, I can't, from the ones I've seen, don't usually depict the president in, in the most uh, gleaming light possible. Yes, there are films like uh, Vice, which is about the Vice President of America, Dick Cheney, which uh, doesn't exactly depict uh, uh, George W. Bush in a very positive light. And there's also the Ron Howard movie, uh, Frost Nixon, which is about uh, Nixon's first in uh, interview after leaving office, which, again, uh, depicts him as more of a complicated president, even though he was widely influential, but his time with Watergate and Papergate kind of uh, mired a lot of people, uh, mired the, everyone's opinions about him, but... About this movie and about Trump, even though this movie focuses him as a real estate mogul rather than a political titan, I feel like this movie didn't exactly do him a lot of favours uh, at all. But again, knowing the movie didn't do that great in the box office, I'm, it's not going to be like uh, Zero Dark Thirty where, or Joker or something where people are going to uh, be constantly talking about this movie and have like a massive box office receipts to prove it or something like Sound of Freedom uh, with Jim Caviezel. Again, this is a very intriguing movie to uh, sit through and to uh, watch, even though the the cinematography is uh, definitely an, uh, interesting and as well the effects do give it more of an 80s retro feel. The acting and the writing is also uh, really good in this movie. The Ali Abshar's Ab uh, direction in this movie is great as well. Even though he, uh, whether this movie it was released too early uh, or or it needs some time just so we can like properly process these Trump years and how much impact he had in the mainstream politics as well into the Republican Party as well. It, even though the movie is boasted by incredible performances here and there and some re and a really good soundtrack to boot, uh, and of course uh, the depiction and the really fraught marriage with Ivana and Donald in this movie, I feel like it's a very decent uh, film which I feel like uh, if, regardless of your political opinions this movie will pretty much leave you shaken or in any sense of word or leave you questioning uh, what type of person Donald Trump really is. So for The Apprentice I'm feeling an 8 out of 10 for this one.
So, what do you think about The Apprentice? Let me, uh, okay, the comments are blocked, but you can comment on my other videos. Uh, like this video, subscribe to my channel, follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and, and Letterboxd, and this is Elijah Wells, and bye!